Hey, I'm Mark, and today I was going to show you my new, improved, and rebuilt hydro system. My old system was 13 years old, and the wooden trough was just something that I threw together with scrap lumber years ago, and it was my very first generator that I made. And well, I decided to, uh, it looked bad, so I decided to rebuild it and I make a few changes. I kept a lot of the old parts, I reused the magnets. The magnets don't wear out. I have a segment on that shortly. And I reused the main hub. I did put new bearings in it while I was at it. And I also went ahead and put a new stator in it. There was absolutely nothing wrong. You can see the dirt fitting there going around. There was nothing wrong with my old system other than it kind of looked bad. It wobbled. I've gotten a lot better making generators. The uh, old stator <clears throat> is a, it's an interchangeable part and the old stator I used 15 gauge wire with 20 wraps two phase and the new one I decided to experiment with and I went with 18 gauge a little smaller and 40 wraps. So, and consequently, I'm getting a lot higher voltage at a lower RPM. Lower amperage, but higher voltage. My wattage is still about the same. I kept the same turbine blade. It's uh, 17 degrees here. We've had a hard winter. See the icicles. I kept the same blade design. And uh, one of the changes I've made is I have it where it is adjustable, the height. So right now I got it on high setting because the water's up and uh, I can lower it several times to different height levels. But the tail water changes with rain. The, the head water stays the same on the dam. Let me take y'all up to the barn and I'll show y'all a segment on the, the magnets and wiring up the stator. Well, this is my casting. It's pretty accurate. You can... Um, but it is a casting, so I'm going to true it up. Now, I could chuck this up in the lathe, but I understand that most people don't have a lathe. So, basically, I've turned my drill press into a milling machine. And admittedly, it's not as accurate as a true milling machine, but it's close enough. So I just got it C-clamped down to the table, welded a uh, plate onto the shaft, trued it up. And what I'll do is... <clears throat> I'll lower the drill press down, grinder. I got it set on high speed, and I'll control my depth. I'll only take a few thousandths of an inch at a time by just turning the depth screw. And then I'll just spin this by hand as it takes a slice off of it. Now let me get it set up. you can see where it has ground it down so the top's nice and true now we're going to get the, the face of it here true I can simply lower the drill press down as everything is spinning and true it up Next step, <clears throat> now that I've got the top true, the side true, and the bottom true, I got a 3 8 inch drill bit and I squared it up and I'll simply true up each slot. Well, we're wiring the stator. I've got two wraps done. I'm using a, an 18 gauge wire and uh, using 40 wraps. My other stator was a 15 gauge wire with just 20 wraps. So this should give me a little more uh, voltage. And this is the magnet I'll be using. And you can see the width of the magnet is from center. Yeah, I can line it up here for y'all. 
it's from the center of this slot the wire to the center of the next one so you're skipping that one in the middle because once we wire it like this that's single phase and then we're going to come back and wire between the two here and that's going to make it the double phase so this is going to be a double phase alternator and then we'll convert it to DC with a full bridge rectifiers so it's going to take me a um, about a week to get all this done up and uh, I'll uh, give you another update then well I got the first phase done this is a going to be a two phase alternator system that I'll convert to DC these are the two lead wires the second phase I will start here and the wire will go and wrap around splitting that one that's already there so you're offsetting your timing as the magnets go by by just that distance that's what makes it a two phase well I'll uh, give you an update when I got the second phase all in well I got the stator wired up you can see it's a two phase you can see the how the coils kind of overlap each other I could probably squeeze in a third phase if I wanted to but it's not necessary on what I'm doing well, next is to get this mounted in position and uh, onto the bearings when we got the outer housing made this be the part that will spin and holds the magnets I got it all trued up we're going to uh, get it a good paint job good coat of primer and finished paint Hey, I wanted to show you all the proper way to use and store a magnet. I get questions about people say, oh, your generator's not going to, to last because the uh, magnets will wear out. But when you put a magnet in a ring, it's stored in harmony. And you can see there's no magnetic flux leaking out. This is positive, negative, positive, negative. The, flux is, the magnetic flux is going in through the iron end of the stator through the coils of the wire and then back to the magnet through the ring and then back again it's back and forth it's in harmony when you put a magnet on a piece of plate like this similar to that it's not in harmony you can see when you put it in a ring again it, the, the flux is flowing all on one side it's in harmony it'll last for eons well, I'm doing an RPM test. We're running at about 100 RPM, and we were about 15, 14 volts. I only got it hooked to one phase. There, it's about 12 volts, and we're about 75 RPM. Well, I'm fixing to release the water. I have a block bearing here just to keep it from wobbling. I've designed it where fish and turtles and snakes and pine cones and everything can just sling out of it. It would, it would make more power if the shroud went down deeper but uh, it's just too much maintenance. It's always getting clogged with something. The dam I made by just putting busted concrete in the creek and then laying a piece of carpet and a piece of carpet over the front of it and it makes an instant dam. Well, let's release the water and show y'all it working. It charges batteries battery banks about 400 feet a little less than 400 feet you see the wires going up it runs an inverter and I'm running a couple refrigerators off this thing I found is I put a board in there at that angle and it keeps a vortex from making I found that if it makes a vortex it sucks air and I lose power so I put that 
board in there and I still want a little vortex action but I just don't want it to suck air down in it. Real low maintenance. I just come down here and put a little grease. Put a little grease in the fitting about once a year. Well, I appreciate y'all watching.